These 10 young doctors were chosen to be our surgeons of the future. They've had just one year to progress from novices to performing their own operations. As final exams loom, the trainees need as much operating experience as possible. It would have been nice to do it, but we're not going to force anyone into doing it just for the sake of me practicing. With just weeks to go, every operation is a chance to give themselves a competitive edge. I don't know if I'm going to fail or not. There's a lot of people that have failed already. A little bit, a little bit nervous. <laughs> Come take a seat. We feel that you're probably not in a position where we can allow you to progress to next year. For some, it won't be enough. Not all of our trainees will make the final cut. Twenty-six-year-old Nicola Robertson spent her first months in training taking some knockbacks. Oh, sorry. I do get really annoyed with myself if things aren't done to perfection. She eventually got to do her own operation, which was a big success. Okay. Yes. She's okay. It's six weeks before her final exams, and Nicola has been in 90 operations. Like all the trainees, she's desperately trying to reach the surgery school target of 120. Now I'm coming to the end of my first year of training. I'm at the point where I, kind of, I like to do as much as I can. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I can do some today. This morning at Epsom Hospital, the theatre's busy. It's a chance for Nicola to add to her numbers. Are you all right if I just examine the hernia before we do the operation? If Mr Smith is happy, that is. So now hopefully that will be a nice, simple operation um, and we'll repair that for you today. Right. All right. Are you going to be doing it? <laughs> um, I will be involved in the operation, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if that's OK with you, sir. Yeah, fine, yes. <laughs> I didn't want to terrify him, so, yeah. Uh, and the patient has to be aware of whether you're going to be involved or not, but he seemed relatively happy. So the patient's willing, but now Nicola has to convince her consultant, Mr Zaidi, that she's capable of doing it. We're going to be able to kind of try because I've obviously seen them before. You can do it. You can do skin to skin if you're confident. Thank you. When surgical trainees ask to do a procedure, I think that means that they are feeling confident, which is a very good thing. I haven't done one before, so I can do this. And that's and that is good good news. Now she's persuaded her consultant to let her do it, the pressure is on Nicola to perform well. Is it okay to start? I am quite determined. If I know I want to do something and I set my mind to it, then I am very determined. And I just want to go under that little yeah. But I can be quite apprehensive and I do doubt myself. If I don't, can I just do it with artery cord? Yeah, yeah, no she gets to do the operation from beginning to end. Okay. Good. Thank you. Nicola's learning that being pushy can get her the operations she needs. But with just weeks to go, will it be too late? So even though I really enjoyed doing that, and it's really good that I've done one for the first time, I almost wish I could just do it again now. When she applied for training, 25-year-old Yvonne Umabwani found out she was one of the year's best students. I was quite surprised that I uh, was in the top 10% because uh, I actually thought I'd fail being Sam. <laughs> and then I thought, I better not say anything because soon I'll get an email saying that actually we made a mistake. But <laughs> no, apparently so. Apparently it was true. Are you still drinking lots of water? Yvonne's mum and dad are from Nigeria, but she was brought up in Cheshire. Good. My parents uh, are quite proud. They say, oh, my daughter's a surgeon. Everyone goes, oh, wow. <laughs> All right, thanks. Bye. Yvonne's got only one ambition, to become a plastic surgeon. 
plastic surgery is well known across the world as being one of the most competitive specialities in surgery to get into. But that's what I want to do, really. So I have to kind of just make sure that I keep myself at my best to, to put myself in the running. But even then, it's not, it's not definitely guaranteed. But for now, she's at King George Hospital in the less glamorous urology department, dealing with the waterworks problems of elderly patients. How's your flow? Very weak. It's not very strong at all, not like it used to be. And I thought it's just my age. Well, I'm only a youngster, really. Exactly. 21 next birthday and all that. Oh, I'm older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a urologist, even though I've done eight months of it. Maybe you want to go to the top. I'm a girl. Most of the patients are male, and old men as well. They get extremely embarrassed by the fact that they're having a female examine them. But I need to have a, examine your prostate. OK. Oh, you're not going to do it, are you? I am. OK. I don't necessarily want to spend all day, every day, knee-deep in wee or sticking scopes up people's willies. I'm up all night. I never hardly sleep this pee, 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 and it drives you mad. I enjoy doing it because it's given me a lot of skills, but it's not something that I'd want to do for the rest of my career. Yvonne will have to find a way to reach 120 operations to give her any chance of becoming a plastic surgeon. <laughs> 26-year-old trainee Nick Antonopoulos has come a long way to become a surgeon. I grew up where I still am, actually, in a council flat in Wood Green. Not, not one of the best areas. Didn't go to a very good school. Um, my school actually got closed down after I left because of bad GCC results. Okay. I'll come as soon as I can, yeah. It's All right. spring. All right. Nick and the team at Queen's Hospital are dealing with gardening enthusiast Ken. It was a nice day, so I decided to cut the, cut the grass and uh, got me flying my out of the shed. I'll go, I'll go a bit mad with it now and again sort of thing, so I pulled it across and, of course, the blades come round. And the rest is history, really. As I just say, it was just uh, all blood coming out, running doors. Uh, called up to me daughter, get an ambulance. I think I've chopped me toes off. I'm going to bring you in. Okay, One toe needs stitching, yeah, but Ken might lose yeah. another. Nick and the team will try to save it if they can. Gardening's a dangerous thing. Originally, when I was at uni and med school, I didn't want to become a surgeon at all. I was quite offended by the whole notion of surgeon. I didn't like them. I thought they were very arrogant, rude. I hated them. And then I was in um, doing a surgical rotation, and the, the registrar then was like, oh, you'd be a really good surgeon. You used to be a surgeon. You really think surgically. And I was like, I got really annoyed with him. I was like, we're trying to say I'm rude. What? I thought I was being quite nice to him. And when I started working properly as a doctor, my first job that I ever did was surgery. And I really, really liked him. And I thought, OK, yeah, I quite like, I could do that. It's Ken's lucky day after all. He gets to keep all his toes. Yeah, very nice. Nice to see that. I mean, it's quite a, um, it's quite a common, straightforward type of thing. But I'd never really seen it before, so it's good to see it first hand. And for Nick, it's another new operation to chalk up in his logbook. They were chosen from 2,000 applicants for one of the toughest surgical schools in the world. But to stay on course, they now have to pass the first year assessments. The first hurdle is the practical exam. If their surgical skills are not good enough, they will be asked to leave the course. Some are closer to failure than they think. As head of the School of Surgery, Professor Stanfield helped choose these trainees. He will judge their performance on the number of operations they've been to. We are looking for them to be involved in approximately 120 cases per year. The trainee who does best is the trainee that elbows in. The trainee that does really well is the trainee that's always available. Yvonne wasn't that keen on looking after old men in neurology. Now she's moved into general surgery, she has a chance to chalk up bigger and more complicated operations. I'm constantly fighting to get into theatre, so even when it's not my fear today, I will still go in and say, oh, can I do that appendix, or can I do that hernia repair? I'll be the first person to scrub up, but I'm always wanting more. 
Her registrar, Chris, is impressed. Yvonne's prepared to put the extra hours in. Um, she has been to extra theatre sessions, and if there's something going on, it's not a case of waiting to be invited to do something. She's always asking, can I do this? And that's the sort of thing that you need. You need to put yourself forward. Today, she's getting to do a major procedure. Someone who needs to have his above leg amputation. So I've not done one of those before. And uh, it's me and the reg. So, tally ho. Chris, am I going to get up to do much of it? I don't see why not. There you go. I'm not doing all the work today. <laughs> well, there you go. My first above knee amputation. I think he needs to see you. No, you left, before we start, you have to speak up loud because I'm mutton jerk. That's all right. Charles has very bad blood circulation in his leg. He's had to make a tough decision. Well, I talked it over with my family, my wife and my son, and we thought it would be the best. But it's not going to get, not going to get any better. Yes. How many of these have you seen? None. None at all. Okay. I know how to do it theoretically. Fair enough. Let's see if that theory is any good. Just patient asleep. She hasn't done an amputation before, but Yvonne has bags of confidence. I do feel, as long as I have guidance, then yeah, I think I'm pretty competent to do it. I know the basic skills of surgery, so if I do get the chance to leave, then that's fantastic. By being a surgeon, you do need to have that determination. I think that I have a side of me that is extremely determined. I strive to excel. I am competitive and I want to be at the top of my game. The job that we're doing, we're cutting people open, we're taking out organs. Who would want a surgeon that isn't able, who wasn't that focused or determined or knew exactly what they were doing? You don't want someone just to be kind of slapdash about it. It's an operation that hasn't changed much since the Battle of Waterloo. Yvonne's first leg amputation has gone well. Happy? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. I quite like, I like big operations. Like, quite fun. I think she's, she's doing the right things. She's very capable, she's very keen. She's always hanging around in theatres. Uh, and I think she's got the right mentality to survive in this job. It's lunch time. <laughs> no breakfast, no lunch, uh, and I've still got another, uh, a million patients to see, so it's a start to the day. <laughs> in just a few weeks, Yvonne will compete with the other trainees in the final assessments. Only the best will get a plastics placement next year. Surgeons are an interesting breed. They represent every different type of personality that there is. But the two things that really do make them stand out is that they are very hardworking and they're able to make a decision. Because, of course, when you make a decision to operate, you actually have decided that you are going to put knife to skin and open that patient up. Nick's short of operations, but this evening, he's starting a night shift where he could get a late emergency operation. There's a good chance we might get some tonight when it comes up because there's, there's so much on the list now, there's a good chance there'll be some left for us to do. So we'll see. Come on, calm, Nick, come on, the doctors here. Tell me what's been going on. I've been having this belly Hmm. How long that First been? patient of the night is Carl. He's got all the early signs of appendicitis. So make your tummy nice and soft for me. Well done. You a fan of the football? Yeah. What team you support? West Ham. West Ham? Oh, well, you're brave. Let's go. Someone has to, eh? <laughs> Nick's always wanted to be in medicine. From the beginning, it was my sister. She's four years older than me. She's mentally disabled quite badly. And I always wanted to, I was always like, oh, don't worry, I'll get older, I'll become a doctor, I'll fix it, it'll be fine. Um, which obviously is a lot beyond anyone, but that was when I was young, that was always the idea. From very young, like four or five years old. And then it was always like, oh, Nick's going to become a doctor, everyone's calling me Dr Nick from like secondary school, and it was just, I don't know, I didn't really even think about it, it was almost like that was always how it's going to be. For now, Carl will be kept under observation until the morning. 
It's 10 o'clock. Nick has to find a case soon because after midnight, the theatres only take life-threatening operations. Nick carries on his search. Have I had anything like this before? Never, no. When's it need to be prescribed? It's going to be a while. We're very busy. So that was all Monday night? Yeah. So now it's Wednesday night. Well, it was uh, staying in bed all day yesterday. OK, I'll come round as soon as I'm free, I'll come round. OK. OK? Uh, hopefully, when I did one, you did it. Just call your details on it. So that's your name, obviously. That's the surgeon who's responsible, the yeah. consultant, Mr Coker. A late admission, Christian, definitely needs an appendix operation. Need your signature and your name there. It's perfect for Nick. Any questions? So we'll see you shortly. Okay. But it's late, and it's not a life-threatening condition. All right. So we'll book him in, but it'd have to be tomorrow now, won't it? Tonight, Nick's run out of time. Because it's very late, it's like one in the morning. Well, maybe will done tomorrow morning instead. Okay. Okay, oh, well, just a few hours away. All right, all right. Cheers. So we'll see you tomorrow. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It would have been nice to do it, but we're not going to force anyone into doing it just for the sake of me practicing this. I mean, the patient comes first, and he doesn't need to have it done now, so we'll, we'll wait to a more appropriate time for him. Nick's been unlucky but he can't afford to let operating opportunities slip by. It's a nervous time for all the trainees. Today, they are taking the first end of year assessment. I just was trying to figure out so I knew that. <laughs> They're repeating our practical test, which they all took at the start of the training year. To pass, they have to show that their surgical skills have improved. The trainees face six different tasks. Last year, Nicola didn't do well. Right, OK, just go in. One of the tasks is to stitch up foam representing a section of bowel. Nicola's nerves got the better of her. Yeah. I want to stay. Oh, uh, no, hang on. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, the other way. Yeah. That's the free end, isn't it? Yeah. Her suturing was amongst the worst of the whole group. Yeah. Practice at home every night. Every night. You want surgeons that can't tie knots. She isn't looking forward to doing it again. The suturing one always gets me just because I get nervous under this kind of pressure. If I do badly in this exam, I could potentially fail the year. They have just eight minutes for each task. It's Nicola's turn to do the stitching. Hello there. Doing what you want to place the stitches and how you're going to construct it. Um, what I'd do is I'd start with... Um, you want to be working extremely cosily. Nicola asks us to stop filming. But what did the examiner make of her stitching? Compared to the other trainees today, I thought it was probably just slightly below average performance. Last year, Yvonne excelled in these tests. To get the top job she wants, she needs to do well again today. I came top 10% last year, so I'm quite worried about there's nowhere else to go now apart from staying there or going down, so I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried. Yvonne's technically very confident. The attention to detail wasn't quite right, though. I don't know if I did better or worse this time round. 
It's essentially the same as last time, but I don't know if I've done better or worse. <laughs> Nick's not showing any nerves. I'm feeling relaxed about it, I'm not too bothered. Get it done, get it out of the way. <laughs> Hello, Hi there. Andrew Ballarat, um, take Nick. a seat. Thanks. But his stitching is inside out, not a great start. You always put your knots on the inside? You should put them on the outside. Well, no, thanks. Will he do better in communication skills, where he has to break bad news to an actress? Do I know her name already, or...? Jim, do I do? Oh, okay. OK, so I haven't met you before? No. No, OK. Hello there. My name is Luke. I'm one of the doctors here. What's your name? I'm Maria Davis. Maria Davis. Hi, Mrs Davis. Um, I'm not Mrs Davis. Just call me Maria. Just call me Maria. OK, fine. Well, I'm Nick. Nice to meet you. You were treated for the breast cancer a few years ago. I believe everything was going fine until now. Um, but unfortunately, it looks almost definitely that this is due to the cancer spreading. Given you must see people like you all the time, mm -hmm. you can't be exact, what are we talking here? Years, months? I would say we're talking years, but we're not looking at very many years. I wouldn't say decades, certainly less than that. I have two children. Yeah. It's going to be difficult. And They're only six. Six and eight. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, that's just how life goes sometimes. <laughs> I beg your pardon. With the cancer thing, that that's just how it goes sometimes. And with... I mean, I'm sorry. I know you're trying to help me. Yeah. But to say that's just how it goes is not very appropriate, given I'm not going to see my children grow up. And I'm sitting here thinking, why me? Yeah. Well, there's no answer to that question, unfortunately. I'm not asking you to answer that question. Yeah. So, I don't think I did a terrible break in bad news. It wasn't fantastic, but that is just how it goes. I mean, I know, fair enough, I appreciate her point. You know, it's not the nicest way to phrase it, maybe. I don't think it's that terrible. I mean, how else would you say that? At the end of the day, that is just how it goes. So, <laughs> that's just how it goes. Nick, Nicola and Yvonne will have to wait for four weeks to find out their results. If they haven't improved <laughs> since the beginning of the year, they could fail. But this isn't just about passing exams. The trainees' focus must always be on their patients. In Charing Cross Hospital, 26-year-old surgical trainee Ed Lake is in intensive care, learning how to deal with critically ill patients. On this ward, one in four patients will not survive. You do get used to, I think, dealing with um, people just being very unwell and also they have to try and keep positive. It sounds sometimes sounds a bit ridiculous telling people to keep positive, but they do have to because um, it's going to help their recovery if they have that, try and keep a positive attitude. Oh, that is absolutely spot on. Fine. She had some platelets already. Maureen is the most seriously ill patient Ed has ever had to deal with. She's lost a lot of blood during a major operation for bowel cancer. The platelets were 12. She's had another pull since then, and she's had another sample sent off. Maureen now needs a further operation this morning to remove more bowel if her life is going to be saved. Consultant Dr Gordon is in charge. You care for the patients 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and, you know, there is no start-finish. You just keep going until they get better, hopefully. So, yeah, she's been through a lot, but she's, you know, she keeps pulling through, and so... We're hopeful. Maureen's husband, Michael, has been by her side. Hi there, Michael. How, How are you doing? How are you? Grand. Did we call you up shortly? Well, yeah, I'm sorry about the waiting around. Yes. Just trying to get in the best state possible to oh, take yes. her to theatre. Maureen will need a huge blood transfusion before her operation. It's Ed's job to organise this. Hi, it's Dr. Blake here in ITU. Um, we urgently need some pods up here. By nine o'clock, Maureen has been given five bags of blood and fluid. Oh, that one's almost ready. The theatre is waiting. Ed gets positive results back from the lab. 47. Brilliant. 
Um, have you got an HP? 8.1. Okay. She's ready to go. I think she's as ready as she can be. While they're breathing, there's still a little hope. Yeah. Will Maureen survive the operation? Nicola's worried about how she did in her practical exam. You feel like as soon as you leave, you're like, oh God, I wish I'd, I could have done it better. It's the week before the final assessments, and she's still short of the operation total. If I can just feel your neck from behind, if you just look. Kevin is today's patient. Okay, that's fine, sir. Um, I'm here to get this lump removed. I've had it for about five years, I think. But my wife finally dragged me down to get it done. And recently, a lot more people are looking at it like, well, you know, what you got there, like an alien or something growing underneath it. So, yeah, it's just, just, just to, for my own benefit and my wife's, and just to, to get rid of it. It doesn't look nice. It's another good operation for Nicola, but it's not just sheer numbers that count. It's also how much of the surgery the trainees actually get to do. And if she can do it without help from the... consultant mm. Mr. Thomas, it will improve her chances of passing the final assessment. How many of these you've done before? One. Oh, one. I thought you'd done more. No. Where have you been hiding? I've assisted and done bits mm. of them. Well, Nicola will be start here and do as much as I feel happy um, she can do. And um, I'll take over and do bits as necessary. Uh, we'll see how she gets on. If it's a straightforward one, then maybe she'll be able to do it all. The neck is quite a daunting area to cut into if you've never cut into it before. That's fine. Don't want to go willy-nilly hacking around in the neck. Let's do the same distance. It is satisfying to do an operation without your seniors having to step in. You know you're kind of on the right track in what you're doing. When you get a blackhead on your face, I mean, squeeze it, that white stuff that comes out, it's similar to that, but a very big one. Nicola has to cut out the empty cyst without damaging Kevin's neck. No, I said that is the bottom Yes, I think it is. Face of the yeah. Good. Down here. Yes, it's all out, it's gone very well. She did 95% of the operation yeah. herself. I think this yeah, the first year is about mm. proving to yourself and others, you know, that you've got what it takes to be a surgical doctor. It's brilliant if someone says that, you know, they, they think you are doing OK, they're not going to have to tell you to stop. Nicola's reached 114 operations, six short of the target. It will be up to the panel to decide if she's done enough. Hi, it's Dr. Lake here in ITU. It's been two and a half hours since Maureen left intensive care. She's back from theatre. This is good news. Um, yeah, so they, they've managed to save some of the bowels. Yes. So yes. there's still a long way to go. Oh, yeah, oh, he said that. But but his own I think it's as good as it could have been, probably. It's a long road. So we'll see. You can go and see her anyway. Yeah, that's all good. right. Take care. Yeah. Thank you very no much. Well, that's Thank all right. It's lovely to see her back again. Uh, I didn't think this morning we'd see her anymore. Despite the team's best efforts, Maureen's condition grew worse. After three days in intensive care, she died. Obviously, it, there's some kind of professional disappointment that you can't, you couldn't have done kind of more for them, or they, you know, you couldn't have helped them. A lot of people come in and and get cured and go out, but there are going to be numbers of a number of people who don't make it out. I can't really remember a time when I haven't dealt with that reasonably well. I'm sure, I'm sure it kind of must have just. I've just experienced it a few times and then I felt reasonably comfortable with the idea of death and 
it's just one of those things that happens in hospital and you kind of just deal with it, I think. There's some kind of app system. Many thanks, yours sincerely, Dr. Ann Antonokopoulos, SHO, to Mr. Jacobs. Nick's practical tests didn't go well. It was a wake-up call. Time is running out, and he knows he needs to improve to pass the year. Hey, seven, two, one, thank you. I would say there's always more, where even now there's more work that I can do. Today, Nick's hoping he can impress top vascular surgeon, Mr. Jacobs, and get a chance to assist in a bypass operation. How much? 158 for three. For three? They lost three wickets in 10 minutes? Yes. He may know about cricket, but Mr. Jacobs soon has Nick stumped. Tell me what you find in this angiogram. So? That's all right up here, isn't it? Yeah. High legs there, OK. What sort of angiogram is it? Is it transfemoral? Oh, it's like, yeah. Angiogram which was they... taken. Why? For a gangrenous toe that she's got. Gang which leg? On the right. Left. Uh, left. Gangrenous left big toe. Their diabetic patient has terrible blood circulation in her leg. It's so bad that her big toe is gangrenous. OK, let's go. Mr. Jacobs continues to test Nick as he tries to find a way of bypassing the blockages. OK, where is the vein now? Have I seen it? Have I cut it? Or is it still there, Nick? Have I cut it? No. And where is it? If you don't tell me, I might cut it. Yeah, I can't see it. You can't see it? What is that? Ah, here we go. There it is. Yeah. Come down, come down. The blood vessels are more damaged than they thought. The operation cannot proceed any further. I don't know. I think it's not possible to do anything for this woman, sadly. All Nick can do is close the wound. It's not the experience he needed. Soon, Nick will be facing his final assessment. Has he done enough? We all want these trainees to succeed because we've been there. We've all been that trainee in their first year. We've all been that trainee taken through that first operation. We know the emotions that they're going through. Uh, and, and we really, really do feel for them. Today is Judgment Day. The trainees have to attend their final assessment at the school's base in central London. At last, after a year of effort, they'll find out if their work has been good enough to allow them to pass and continue to next year. I slept pretty well last night, actually. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Ed is the first to face three experienced consultants. Let's have a look at your logbook, if we may. Every operation, Every procedure he's attended is displayed for the panel to see. So there's actually very little in the way of first surgeon operating in yeah. our logbook. Yeah, um, I just haven't... For anything. It, uh, there just hasn't been the opportunity. So your logbook's a bit lacking, I think. OK, could you just scroll down to the bottom for us, just so we can see the total number of operations? 47. OK, thank you. Would you mind just stepping outside for two minutes sure. while we have a little discussion, yep. and then we'll call you back in in a okay. second. Top general surgical consultant Fiona Mint is the training programme director. Yes, of course the London Deanery wants high standards, but it's because we feel the end product has to be of a high standard. Hello. Hello. We're going to award you not a one which means satisfactory progress, but a two. And that means that there are specific competencies that we wish you to meet. Mm -hmm. And we're going to reassess you in March. On yep. one. Fantastic, thank, thank you. you. He scraped you through, but Ed has to improve next year. Is it ever in doubt? Probably for a couple of minutes, yeah. Has to wear a suit to his next assessment. That's not one of his competencies. No, I didn't. Where's your suit? I'm allowed. Yvonne was in the top 10% of trainees at the beginning of the year, but even she's feeling the strain. 
I'm actually a bit worried. I think I was a lot more calm having spoken to my mum and now I'm a lot more nervous because people are failing. People I know are failing and that's always scary. I hope that I've done enough, but I don't know. I don't know until I get in there, really. You all right to run? Yes. OK, welcome. She'll only get the plastic surgery job she wants if she's still one of the best. But in the practical exam, Yvonne has not done as well as she wanted. So what do you think happened? So you should be at your peak of your knowledge. I know. I think I was just uh, slightly drained by that point from everything. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Okay. okay. All right. Let's have a look at your logbook, if we may. And just scroll down slowly. Yvonne's made a big effort to clock up 138 operations. All validated. Well done. <laughs> Anything else you want to ask or say? No. Any? So that's a. Panel decision is that you have made satisfactory progress this year. So well done, you'll progress to next year. OK. Ambitious Yvonne wanted to excel. How was it? It's fine. But uh, I passed everything, but I don't think I did well enough to get my job. I don't know. I should be happy considering that the last four people in front of me have had to... Um, have either failed <laughs> or have had like conditional offers, but I don't know. I don't know, I can only find out like next week where I am. I'm not bothered about passing. I didn't really think that I wouldn't pass, but it's more, I more want to know where I am next year. North London boy Nick has come a long way to be a surgeon. He's next to face the panel. Well, I mean, there's nothing to get, you know, overly excited about or anxious about, I think. Kind of, they give you a kick up the arse if you're lagging behind with a few things. Make sure there's no big problems that you've come across, but really you should have already addressed them by this stage, if there are. And I haven't had any, to be honest, particularly everything's been going quite well. Uh, I don't think anyone would, no matter how badly things have been going, they'll just completely get kicked out today or something like that. I hope not. Nick has had to contend with a lot to get into surgery school. I'm proud of what I've achieved in life so far, but really my debt is to, or my parents mainly, for encouraging me and pushing me and almost forcing me to make sure I did what I could with myself. If it wasn't for those around me, I wouldn't have achieved that. In the next half hour, Nick will find out if he's done enough to make the grade. Hey. Afternoon, Nick. Can we have your portfolio if you have it? If you'd like to give that to Mr Curry. Sure. Anatomy. You have attended only 28% of anatomy. What happened there? I don't think it was as low as that. Um, you missed 10. General surgery, you do a week of nights. It's so one of the lowest attendances we've had in the whole year. Mm. OK. Now the panel want to see if he's near the 120 before. operation target. And stop there. Total of 69 this year, is that correct? Yeah, I think that sounds about right. OK, that's pretty much bare minimum. We were expecting more than that. Um, do we need a discussion, I think? Would you mind just stepping outside just for a couple of minutes? We'd just like to have sure. a little discussion, and we'll yeah, call okay. you back in shortly. Sure, it's better door. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Can you finish yet? All right. Have some kind of discussion, and then we'll call you back in a minute. He's not quite there, is he? But I'm a bit unhappy with that combined with this, this, yeah. Yeah. his poor attendance and his poor performance in the evaluation. The panel can pass or fail him or ask him to take the year again. Mm. What do we think? Nick, come take a seat. We've had a little discussion. We feel that you're probably not in a position where we can allow you to progress to next year. Okay. okay. And we'd like you to repeat the CT one year. Really? Yes. What do you think about that? Uh, I think that's a bit harsh. I mean, I know the assessments haven't been... I haven't done that many assessments, but I can always still do them by the end of the year. But I think it's a whole host of things. If it was just one, we might just sort of think, well, that's something that can be tidied up. But it isn't. It's too many things in one parcel. 
And I think if you had another year, you could put all that right. Yeah, I agree, but I think I could put most of that right before the end of this year, even. I think there's too much to be put right in the space of time. Surgery isn't like that. It's got to be something that's inbred, something that mm -hmm. you learn as you go along. You can't just put it right in two months. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming. Cheers. All right. Bye -bye. But all right, they want me to do the year again. Because I, mean, I, yeah, I didn't do enough assessments and I didn't go to enough of the teaching. So I said, fair enough. If that's what you need me to do, I'll do it. The panel have given him a second chance. He won't get another. All ten of our trainees have come a long way this year. Rishi, come and take a seat. Sure Rishi sure began his training making basic errors. No, you can't do an appendectomy. Yeah. You can't do a hernia operation yeah. till your knot tying and your suturing yeah. is absolutely slick. Yeah. Only two validated out of that many. Golly, what happened there? There has been, uh, has been quite difficult. He's learned his lesson. Passed. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm relieved and I'm happy. Anita had to overcome an early setback. You just knocked my dress, you know, from my skin grant off. I think the panel agrees that you've made satisfactory progress for this year, so well done. <laughs> it's nice to just get that out of the way. You can get back to work and get on with life. Smitesh had to wait in line for his chance in orthopaedics. That's pretty much bare minimum for the year. I mean, we, we've let you through the skin of your teeth there. Okay. Uh, I feel good. Yeah. Uh, I'm relieved and uh, I'm, I'm obviously happy. And Andy and Honor were delighted to make the grade. I passed. I think the kind of biggest feeling that I'm feeling is, you know, really pleased, really happy. Um, I don't think I can get the smile off my face. So. I'm a little bit, a little bit nervous. <laughs> Perfectionist Nicola struggled in early operations. Yeah, I feel like I can't get deep enough. She had a shaky hand and had to take some criticism. I'm hoping she's not going to be disappointed after this failure. I can eat things over in my head. I think everyone has those days, don't they? Her nerves got the better of her in the practical exam. She's unsure how well she did. Now, after a year of worry, she's going to find out if she really is cut out to be a surgeon. Wouldn't mind giving Mr Curry your portfolio? Yes, of course. OK, let's just see what you did. Put one here. Anatomy, nearly 80% attendance. I think we'll give you that. 78.6%. OK, could you just scroll down to the bottom so we can see the total for the year? 114. She's actually improved a lot in her practical exam. And in October, way back in October, you were in the sixth decile. Mm -hmm. um, and this June, you were up in the third decile. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a good improvement, because everybody's scored, scores went up. So the whole group went up. So for you to actually go up and go further, that's actually quite a good result. Okay. So well done. OK. Are we happy? Yeah. Are we happy? Yeah. OK. All right, that's satisfactory to proceed. So congratulations on that. Lovely. Thank you. How do you go? Nicola's made it. She's got one foot on the ladder to become a top consultant. The nicest thing is in 10 years time, having new colleagues who you can remember when they were in their first year. Yvonne got her top choice of speciality for next year in plastic surgery. Nick is looking forward to proving himself. And Nicola is one step closer to her dream of becoming a consultant. It's been an amazing year and it has had its ups and its downs, but I'm definitely a surgeon compared to where I was at the start, yeah. <laughs>